Dear colleagues, pain is a big concern for most patients undergoing cardiac surgery. Each surgical intervention is associated with the patient's perception of pain and every surgical patient may feel it in a different way. This presentation is about post-surgical pain after cardiac surgery, which remains a clinical challenge. My name is Karja Hanne Jailo and I'm going to give you an update on some of the evidence. But first, I would like to remind you about the current definition of pain. According to the definition from the International Association for the Study of Pain, published in 2020, pain is an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with, or resembling that associated with, actual or potential tissue damage. This definition is expanded by the addition of six important keynotes, which are all relevant for post-surgical pain. Pain is always a personal experience. Pain and nociception are different phenomena. Through our life experiences, we learn the concept of pain. A person's report of an experience as pain should be respected. Although pain usually serves an adaptive role, it may have adverse effects on function and social and psychological well-being. Verbal description is only one of several behaviors to express pain. So, holding on to this definition and keynotes, let's move on to post-surgical pain. Post-surgical pain can be acute, subacute or chronic. Acute pain is almost unavoidable after surgery. Fortunately, it can be controlled and mostly resolves within days. However, for major surgery, like cardiac surgery, it may last longer and persist for several weeks being subacute. For some patients, acute postoperative pain persists beyond the usual time of tissue healing and transitions into a chronic pain state, chronic or persistent post-surgical pain. Chronic post-surgical pain, CPSP, is a common and serious clinical problem resulting in impaired postoperative long-term outcome and reduced quality of life. The prevalence of chronic post-surgical pain differs after common surgical procedure and this is illustrated in this table, taken from a review by Glare, Aubrey and Miles, published in Lancet 2019. 5-10% to 10 report moderate to severe chronic post-surgical pain after CABIT, and these are the patients we really should worry about. So, how can we stop the transition from acute to chronic post-surgical pain? The answer is, we have to look at the risk factors. This figure illustrates the most important risk factors for CPSP. The bad news is that acute postoperative pain probably is the most important predictor. On the other hand, the good news is that acute postoperative pain is modifiable. Several studies show poor treatment of acute pain with up to 50% of the patients having moderate to severe pain the first days after surgery, and this is not good enough. The treatment options are pharmacological, non-pharmacological or both. The evidence for a multimodal or balanced analgesic approach has been increasing and should include regularly administration of analgesics with different non-opoid agents like NSAIDs and paracetamol. Opoid agents, which might be reduced with the introduction of multimodal approaches, should also be relevant. Regional anesthesia techniques may be involved. Standardized assessment and documentation of pain must be included in line with guidelines. And of course, the analgesic should be patient-centered. After admission, patients are their own pain doctors and should adhere to pain protocols. With reduced length of stay, self-management is therefore increasingly important. And this brings us to non-pharmacological approaches where patient education is crucial. Patient information and education is essential both before and after surgery. Transitional pain services and pain clinics with multidisciplinary teams may be useful, especially for patients with intense pain and or high risk for CPSP. Cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, music and massage are other interventions to reduce pain. A multimodal opioid sparing approach is recommended in the enhanced recovery after surgery protocol, ERAS, for cardiac surgery. However, 
the optimal combination of these analgesics is unknown. Hence, the Connect Network has developed a protocol for a systematic review of multimodal analgesic effectiveness on acute postoperative pain management. So, taken together, up to 10% develop moderate to severe CPSP after cardiac surgery. Poorly controlled acute pain after surgery is among the strongest predictors for CPSP. Multimodal opioid sparing approaches should include pharmacological, non pharmacological, and patient centered approaches. Pain is a personal experience, and patient reported outcome measures should therefore be included. Subacute pain must be emphasized, and patient education is crucial. Thank you, and feel free to join our network connect.